Okay, so we're going to continue our um, discussion of the different laws that led to the atomic theory, and now we're going to talk about uh, law of multiple proportion. Okay, so this is part five, so we're kind of nearing the end to the uh, atomic theory. But before we get there, uh, I want to remind you a little bit of the uh, law of multiple uh, definite proportion that I, I talked about in the previous video, and remember that that tells us that if you have uh, the same compound, whether different sources, you might get it from, you know, one uh, continent or another, you get the same exact composition, which is the same percent mass of the elements that you have in there. And we did an example of calculating percent masses of that uh, particular uh, sample, the different sample, uh, and they all have about 51.4 percent copper. Okay, so I want to continue uh, on with law of definite proportion a little bit just to work through another example just so you really get an understanding of this concept. Um, again, just like in the previous examples, if you could just pause the video at this point, work through it yourself. Take as much time as you like so that you really get an answer for this question. And then I'm going to work on it on the next slide and you can compare your answer to mine later. Okay, so if you see um, that the information that were provided on, on that problem in the previous slide is that there's three car grams carbon for one gram of hydrogen uh, in a sample of methane, okay? And then what we're being asked to do is calculate uh, the amount of hydrogen we're going to have. We have 50 grams uh, methane, uh, so another different sample of methane, but uh, 50 grams now, and we're asked to calculate how much uh, hydrogen we have in that sample of methane, okay? Assuming that methane only contains carbon and hydrogen. Well, uh, hopefully it's fairly straightforward. If methane only contains carbon and hydrogen, that means that if you have three grams carbon for one gram of hydrogen, that means in this particular case we have four grams of methane, right? Because we're just adding one and three together to form four grams of methane. And if we have that, that allows us to calculate the percent mass of hydrogen in methane, which is just right, per percent hydrogen in, in methane is just going to be uh, one gram over four grams because that's uh, hydrogen that's methane times 100 percent which gives us 25 percent, okay? So as a result, if you want to figure out how much hydrogen you have in the 50 grams of methane, you basically just kind of twist this around a little bit. You know that for every, uh, in, in methane, you always have 25 percent hydrogen so then to figure out in 50 grams, you just need to multiply 25 grams, I mean 25 percent times 50 grams methane, right? So then mass of uh, hydrogen is just going to be, if you, you can, uh, you know, it's just going to be 25 percent, which is, remember, is just 25 over 100 times, um, in this case, 50 grams of methane, okay? And that should give me my hydrogen, which is going to be 12.5 grams, okay? Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Uh, again, write the specific part of this that you don't understand. You can feel free to ask me about it. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the third law that eventually would lead us to the Dalton's, uh, with, to Dalton's atomic theory, and this is called the law of multiple proportion. And this was a law that Dalton himself uh, came up with, uh, and what he uh, discovered was that when you have uh, two different elements, let's say, you know, carbon and oxygen, nitrogen and oxygen, copper and oxygen, whatever, okay, some combination of two elements uh, or more, you can have more elements as well, but two elements is the simplest case. If you have two elements forming a series of compounds, okay, so let's say in one case you have carbon and oxygen forming one type of compound. Another example, you have another carbon-oxygen combining to form a different compound. You can think of this, for example, as carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, okay? At that time, they didn't know the, the, the different formulas of these things, of course, uh, but let's say you know that there's two different oxides of, of carbon, okay? Carbon oxide uh, with one formula and with the other formula. Uh, it turns out that the ratio of the masses of the second element for every gram of the first element can be expressed as ratios of integer, okay? Now, this statement here okay may be a little hard to understand so I'm going to give an illustration of this okay 
So let's say you have, instead of carbon and oxygen, you have nitrogen and oxygen. And we know that nitrogen and oxygen form three different compounds. They all have different uh, numbers of nitrogen and oxygen. We know this because we can calculate the percent mass, remember, from the law of definite proportion. And we found that in, uh, if we were to uh, have only one gram of oxygen in each of these compounds, we find that compound A would contain 1.75 grams of nitrogen, compound B would contain 0.875 grams of nitrogen, and compound C would have 0.4375 grams of nitrogen. Okay, so in other words, they're all different compounds, right? If we only have one grams of oxygen in each of these compounds, we find that that's the amount of nitrogen we're going to have for each of the compound. Okay. Uh, so again, this is sort of similar to the previous problem. Remember we were talking about, in this case for this compound called methane, we have for every one gram of hydrogen, we have three grams of carbon. You can think of, let's say, another compound, maybe uh, ethane, for example, and then for every one gram of hy hydrogen, it's not going to have the same number, uh, it's not going to have the same mass of carbon, it's going to have a different mass of carbon. So that's what that previous slide here is uh, showing you, okay, uh, for one gram of oxygen, these all these three compounds that have nitrogen and oxygen in them have different amounts of different masses of nitrogen, okay? So clearly they're not the same compound, right? If they're the same compound, think about it, right? If they're the same compound, uh, the law of definite proportion says that the, the amount of, you know, uh, nitrogen should be the same, should be identical. So these three clearly are different compounds, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. Now, what the law of multiple proportion says is that if um, you have that situation where you have different compounds and then the masses of the, the second element is, is different per every gram of the first element, okay, uh, which is what we just saw, right? The first element is oxygen, let's say. So for every gram of oxygen, we have different masses of nitrogen, which is our second element. It turns out that the ratio of the masses of the second element, which in this case referring to the ratio of the nitrogen, right, because nitrogen is our second element, can be expressed as the ratio of integers. Okay, so let's see how that's done. So if you go back to the uh, numbers that we had earlier for the amount of nitrogen or the mass of nitrogen we had, remember that we had three different masses of nitrogen, 1.75, 0.875 and 0.4375. This is for compounds A, B, and C. Okay, so what we can do is, as you can see, we can divide, okay, the mass of um, one compound with the other, just the nitrogen, okay, just the nitrogen. And you notice that ratio of compound A to compound B in terms of the number of nitrogen, the mass of nitrogen is. 2 over 1. If you divide these two numbers together, 175 and 0.875, you're going to get a ratio of 2 over 1. And if you divide B with C, again the mass of nitrogen, you're also going to get 2 over 1. If you divide A by C, you're going to get 4 over 1 of the amount of nitrogen. Okay, so think carefully about what that means. Okay, so think very carefully about what that means. What that means is that the amount of or the mass of nitrogen in compound A is four times the amount of um, nitrogen in compound C. What that means is, the another way of saying that is you have four times as much nitrogen in compound A as compound C. You have twice, two times, as much nitrogen in compound uh, B versus compound C. That allows you to determine the formula of compounds A and B if you know the formula of compound C, right? Because we know that A has to have four times the amount of nitrogen, B has to have the, uh, twice the amount of nitrogen for, uh, for every nitrogen you have in C, okay? Okay, so I just wrote down here on the top what I just mentioned the previous one, uh, previous slide, which is that A must have four times the amount of nitrogen you have in C and B must have four, twice the amount of nitrogen in C, okay? So let's say if the formula of C, compound C is, let's say, NO, okay, just to kind of make up an example, right, because it's a, a compound that contains both nitrogen and oxygen, then what should the formula of B, uh, compound B, 
uh, sh should be, okay? Formula for compound B should be a formula that has twice the amount of nitrogen. So that should then be N2O, right? So hopefully you see that, right? If I take this formula, compare that formula, they both have the same number of uh, oxygen, but then the number of nitrogen is twice in comparison to C. What about formula for compound A? Hopefully you can see that it should be something like N4O, okay? So that's the way you can um, derive formulas if you know one of the the formula of one of the compounds okay so you notice how what what you know this is quite important because what it allows us to do is to take you know this is the time when people start to realize that oh maybe we can actually come up with uh, chemical formulas before this they didn't know anything right they didn't know they just knew there's water there's you know uh, you know, there's there's all kinds of waters, river water, well water, and then people realize that, well, all water is actually the same. And then, so then the next question is, what is water made out of, okay? So we need to know the formula of water. But now, if you know another thing, let's say peroxide, right, hydrogen peroxide, another thing that's composed of hydrogen and oxygen, if you know the formula of either water or hydrogen peroxide, you can figure out the formula of the other one using this law, the law of multiple proportion, because you can relate the ratio of the number of one of the elements compared to the other, uh, the number of that same element in the second compound, okay? So we'll do an example of this in the next video, but hopefully, you know, think about it carefully, write down in your notes exactly what this law means and how we can derive formulas using this law, okay? It's really important to understand this.